Joining me are Mike Shuttler and Jim Bland. Mike's been a guest on the Mary Griffith Show before. Jim is new to our program, so we're going to start it off with him. Welcome very much, and tell us a little bit about yourself, please. What do we need to know about Jim Bland? Uh, I moved down here a few years ago. I'm a retired Chicago policeman. I was a Chicago policeman for 30 years. I was a training officer with the Chicago Police Department for many years, and I worked on the, I was a uh, firearms instructor for a while, and then I became a sergeant. I've uh, worked pretty much all over the, uh, the south and west sides of the city of Chicago. Okay, I'm gonna, I don't ever trust anyone with their resume if I don't independently verify it. Uh, do you ever put ketchup on a hot dog? Yes. Oh, I didn't think you could be from Chicago and put ketchup on a sure hot dog. Sure you can. Oh, okay. <laughs> There, he, he failed my one test. <laughs> I like ketchup on my hot dogs too, and so sometimes when I go to Chicago, I have to sneak a packet to put uh, it on. You know, that's, that's not true. That's not true. Okay. No. Well, I was just bullied around. But I'm a Sox fan. I'm a Sox fan, not a Cubs fan. Good. That you can stay then. <laughs> you can stay. Uh, Mike Shuffler, tell us your story, please. Well, um, my first uh, connection with firearms was uh, at age 17 when I was in the Army and I was in the military police and I enjoyed uh, using the firearms and I've used them off and on all that time and uh, 17 years old, that, that's only been a few years ago, so um, I, uh, I'm enjoying the instructing part of it, I enjoy meeting with people and helping them. Uh, safety is my main con concern here though. Whether people take uh, all of our course and decide to carry a, a firearm, that's their, that's their prerogative. I just want to make sure that they know how to use it safely. And uh, there's a lot of people that's going to take it and not decide, you know, decide not to carry one. And, and that's, if they don't feel good with it, they shouldn't do it. Okay, well, we're going to talk about safety and, and several other things as, as time goes on. And, of course, your phone calls are always welcome at 223-9300. 1-800-228-WTAD. If you have friends or family who are interested in this topic and can't listen live, we will have it replayed this afternoon on WTAD.com on the Mary Griffith Show podcast. It will also be up on a television version. Quincy Journal TV will have it afternoon today. So several ways to see this program and hear this program if you can't listen to it live. Uh, recently got information, Mike was happy to uh, send me some information, and I've heard this uh, from other sources besides uh, Mike Shuttler, that there's some concern that firearms instructors are going to just sign off on concealed carry permits whether people have the adequate training or not. In other words, they're just going to say, hey, you, you don't have to take the whole class, I know you can do it, and they're just attaching their name to this without the appropriate certification. So I'd like to know how big a problem this is, do you think, in the state of Illinois? And we'll, we'll start with our former Chicago police officer. How big a problem do you think this is going to be, that people are not going to be properly trained and that instructors are going to sign off, uh, which is not apparently a criminal problem, but maybe should be? Well, it may not be criminal, but the uh, people that take those kind of courses uh, are liable to end up getting decertified. Otherwise, they're going to pay that money get their certification and when the instructor gets caught they will lose their permits. The other thing is the liability factor. Any instructor that does that would be an idiot because he opens himself up to huge liability down the road because if somebody like that signs off on it and that one of his uh, students gets into a shooting and he said, well, the instructor didn't tell me that. I, you know, he, I just went and he signed off on it. They're going to go after the instructor also. But idiocy prevails in, in many places. That's why we have police officers, for example. One of the problems is there's such a huge demand. I, they estimate 400,000 people are going to want to get a concealed carry permit. And how many instructors will it take to get 400,000 people trained? Is that even realistic that that could happen if everybody follows the letter of the law? Yes. And the reason is because, not especially uh, places that have no indoor ranges, a lot of people don't want to shoot outdoors and they don't want to wait, they're going to wait until the, the rush is over. So, And the instructors can only do so many safely. So the people will get forced to uh, wait a little bit. So they can, they'll, they'll get them all. But isn't that one of the problems? The incentive will be, I want it now, 
and I don't have time to take the class, so if you can find someone unscrupulous to sign off. Now, I'm not trying to make this a big problem, a bigger problem than it is, but I think it's good that the National Rifle Association and others are aware this could be happening, and you're going to be your own best inter you're going to be your own best police force, if you want to call it that, unofficial, because if you hear about this happening, you'll be happy to turn those scurrilous people in. Um, it was just released yesterday or the day before that since Sunday, they've had 11,000 applications. Right. Um, we have 1,200 instructors. Also yesterday, the state sent out a form that we hadn't seen before and it's a form to report people that are doing what we're talking about. Um, it is sad that there's people that will cut corners and do that. However, I think I'd rather talk about the positive that right. we do. Well, and, and that's fine. I just, you know, this is, this can potentially be a problem. Yes. And for people out there who are listening, don't fall for this scam. Don't fall for this, oh, don't listen to Mike Shuttler. You know, he, he tells you have to take this big old course. You don't. Just get somebody to sign off of it. So let's talk about what is actually required. So I have, I, for example, I don't even have a FOID card. So first I'd have to get a firearm owner's ID card. Is that something separate or can I do it simultaneously with applying for concealed carry? You can actually do it simultaneously. However, you should do it uh, up, up front if you can. Uh, you know, when kids are born now, you know, they get a... Uh, what kind of card is it? I'm, I'm, I lost the name. Social Security, Social Security card. Social Security card. And I tell people, you know, apply for a FOID card for them at the same time. That, you know, you're going you're gonna to need it down the road and it might take that long to get it. Um, you can take our basic pistol class without a FOID card uh, using one of our firearms as long as you're under the, the direction and, and supervision of someone that's an instructor. However, when you take the second part of that, which is the Illinois concealed carry class, you have to bring your own firearm, and in order to have a firearm, you have to have a FOID card. So, and so you, you can do those months apart, Mary. You don't, right. They don't have to be back to back. So you can apply simultaneously, or you can apply separately. And, and that's part of it. So I don't, I, before we go a little too far, what do you mean by apply uh, simultaneously? You can't apply for a, a concealed carry permit unless you get the 16 hours of training. And you can only go so far in the 16 hours of training unless you have an FOID card. Okay. So you can't get this. So you can't get them simultaneously. You have to get your FOID card first. Correct. Okay. You can take the classes without it, but you can go up to a certain point in the 16 hour class, you can't bring a gun in to qualify. Right. And you have to have your own gun by law and you have to qualify. So you can take the class and then come back after you get your FOID card then qualify and then apply. You can you can apply for it and then go take the course. I mean, you, it's going to be 60, 90, who knows how many days before you get it. But while you're waiting for it, you can go ahead and take the course. Okay, that clears that up. Mm -hmm. So um, folks who already have their FOID cards, uh, what is going to be expected of them? If I want to be eligible for my concealed carry permit, Walk me through exactly the training I'm going to have to have, how many hours it is, what specifically you're going to cover. Just Mike Shuttler, Mr. Bland, whoever wants to take it, walk me through Walk me through what I've got to do to get concealed carry permit in Illinois. Okay. First of all, Illinois has set up uh, different things that will count as credits for the first eight hours. You have to have 16 hours, but hypothetically, if you uh, are former military and you're honorable, you can uh, use your DD-214 that shows that you were in the military, and you can use that. That's an eight-hour credit. Um, you can have a concealed carry from other states, but all the states' concealed carries only count four hours. Um, the basic uh, the hunter safety course is only a four-hour credit. But hypothetically, say I took the hunter safety course and I'd also taken the Utah class, that's four hours and four hours, so that's eight hours that you can use. Now, if you have none of those, obviously don't because you, you said you didn't. Um, you would need to take probably uh, what we consider the, the best part of the, the whole thing is the uh, NRA basic pistol class. 
the NRA basic pistol class will take you from start of never touch the gun until uh, in the end when we have you fire it. Uh, we teach you uh, the difference in different firearms, pistols, uh, revolvers. Uh, we teach you ammunition. We teach you how to hold a firearm, how to stand when you shoot a firearm, how to take it apart, clean it, put it back together. Um, Jim, what have I missed? Uh, there's so much, it's an eight hour class, so needless to say, it, it takes quite a bit. At the end of that, we go to the uh, qualification area and we have you shoot that firearm 50 times at a paper plate, nine inch paper plate. Now, whether you hit that paper plate or not is not important. The important thing is, is after 50 rounds, you feel comfortable holding that and firing it and you know it's not going to bite you, it's not going to hurt you if you do it right. Um, at that point, uh, you've qualified for eight hours class and it does take eight hours and then you can move on to the next, the next part. So obviously people that have got all that training in the military or someone who already had some or parts of that training, they can be factored in. But henceforth, no matter how much experience someone has, the next eight hours, it doesn't matter if you've been hunting for 50 years, if you were a police officer or whatever, you've got to take that concealed carry, that extra eight hours, right? Not the police officers. Oh, the police officers don't? Well, no. they, well they get you get, <laughs> I assume they've been fully trained, right? Right. Yeah. But is your, tra now, okay, off topic, but if you're, okay, when you're indemnified, you're a police officer 24 hours a day. Right. So, anytime you use your service revolver, you're considered in the line of duty. Correct. Am I correct? Okay. So that's why. Yeah, well, As opposed to. Right. And the police officers, the minimum standard in Illinois is 40 hours okay. for a police officer. Plus, the, the concealed carry laws don't apply to them. Right. They're an exemption because they can go into the places that are prohibited to anybody else. Right. And that would be active or retired. You can take your gun to church with you if you want to. Yes, oh, into you a could bar. Too. You could too if you have an Illinois concealed carry, right. providing that church does not have a sign posted that they don't want you to take That's it. not one of the prohibited places. It's not one of the prohibited places. Okay, so let's concentrate then on this, this eight hours that really makes you eligible for concealed carry. Let's talk about the beef of that. So what, what do you do in that eight hours? Okay. But then people have to bring their own gun. So and this, well, th for the classroom portion, no. What the, that eight hours is, is uh, we do a little bit of the first eight hours because a lot of the people are exempted out and it's just going over the Refresh. basic parts. Right, the basic parts of the firearm. Then the rest of it is law. You get the FYD law, you get the transportation laws, you get the storage, you get the uh, federal laws, and then you get the use of force laws, which are when and you can and can't use the gun. And then you also get police interaction, and we touch on what happens after you pull the gun out. Because that, the, the first eight hours, is all the fun stuff that's all the guns and everything else the second eight hours is all crap these are the, if i do this that now i'm now i got all this world of hurt i'm in well one would think that the average person applying for a concealed carry weapon would hope they would never actually draw that weapon and use it in their defense or in the defense of someone else that's the goal that's the goal so the re reality of the situation is you're being trained fairly well for something you hope you never do. But part of the reason you have to be trained very well to do it is because if the state of Illinois is going to allow people to walk around with guns, they want to make sure they know how to use them properly. That's exactly. correct. And, and we tell them from, from the very first to the end that protection of life, protection of life is the only time that you want to use your firearm. You don't want to pull it out and wave it around and try to scare somebody. You don't want to do anything like that because once you do that, you're in more trouble than the person that, that you pull it out against. There's a lot of things to be involved there, a lot of things to think about. And Jim will tell you that the very first time that you pull that out, your life changes forever.
this is where we get into a little bit of trouble with court cases that have been in the news recently. What is the intent of the other person? Correct. I mean, how do you, there is no one way to determine if somebody's trying to do you bodily harm. This is, I mean, I'm just saying this, you, like you said, don't pull it out unless you intend to use it or are willing to use it. Correct. It's not just a deterrent at that point. You're, you're signifying, I am ready, willing, and able to follow through if you continue to threaten me, whatever I perceive that threat to be. The, and yes, because the minute you pull it out, there's a gun at that scene. The other person is unarmed. The minute you display that gun, there's now a gun at that scene, and that weapon retention is, is a big deal. So if you pull it out over something minor that you can't shoot the person for, now you, you're out there and you're waving it around, and now the guy decide, the other person decides they're going to try and take it away from that. Now you're fighting over something silly, yet a gun is involved. So anytime you go into a scene and you're carrying, there is a gun in that room. There is a gun involved in that situation, and the things can escalate very rapidly. Now, of course, Illinois is so late to the game in having concealed carry. Last. Right. <laughs> as, as late as you can be, <laughs> yes. unless we make Puerto Rico a state, yes. we're, we're last. Um, so, in other states that have had this law for a long time, and maybe talk about our neighbors that people might be more familiar with, how, how often, how big a problem is this when people use their weapon to defend themselves, their claim they were defending themselves. How often is it challenged that you shouldn't have perceived that as a threat or or there's a question about whether that was truly a threat to you? Actually, the police will respond to anything. The police do a fantastic job 99% of the time determining the situation. And it's perception is everything if you perceive you're in danger okay you have to be able to articulate that when the police arrive it that your state of mind matters as much as the situation i mean if you're you know five foot ten and you're fighting with somebody 250 pounds and six foot three your perception is different than that person's perception you understand what i mean yes i do but i think this is also where I mean, and that's not really what we're talking but, about today, but this is the, you've got to train people to, to use their it's common a last sense resort. at a time when their adrenaline is running It's always going high. to be a last resort, and that's what we, tra we, we teach them. It's a last res mm -hmm. resort. It's a protection of life. You have to feel that your life isn't threatened, that it's in danger, that you're, you're, you have to make a decision between life and death because your, your life is in danger. It's a protection of life. That's what it's all about. And the other states really haven't had a problem. And there's, and there's always going to be these kind of scenarios. It doesn't even have to involve a gun. It can involve a knife. It can involve a baseball bat. People do bad things to other people all the time. The gun is actually, if you, when you strap it on, there's a tremendous amount of responsibility to it. And it tends to make you think, you know, is it worth it? I'll walk away. It takes some of the much he's to know out. And, and, and I think that's one thing that I've heard, even though I'm not part of the gun culture, if you want to call it that, um, that I've heard that if you're really fully trained and you're very comfortable with the weapons that you own, and most people use them for hunting or target shooting, not for their primary purpose may not be self-defense. When you have a weapon that the primary purpose is self-defense, you're more likely to be highly sensitized to how important that is. Because you go out deer hunting, you're walking around the woods with a rifle, you are anticipating you're going to shoot a deer. But when you are walking around with a concealed carry weapon, you're not out looking for trouble. You're not anticipating you're going to be using it. So the training, you have to rely, fall back on your training to get you through situations that are completely unexpected. Would that, that be a safe thing to say? That's correct. That's 100% correct. You said it very well, Mary. Saved us from saying it, but that's that's the same. That's it's the, the same layman's thing. interpretation. No, but you know what? It's 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 correct. You don't go out with a chip on your shoulder saying, "I'm going to go out and I'm going to use this firearm that's that's on my hip, you know, or in my purse or whatever it is, wherever you're carrying it." Uh, you don't, and and you hope that you never have to use it. Like you said, um, it's it's just something that the other states have already experienced it. 
Illinois is just getting ready to, and it's just something that if you want to use your uh, rights by the uh, the law, you can carry it if you do everything that you're supposed to do. And that's why training is so critical. That's correct. So a 16-hour course is required. You people that have extreme experiences can get out of some of that, but basically, you're not. Nobody's going to get out of the last eight hours of that, and that's where the rubber really meets the road. And you are saying that because um, you guys professionally, this is how you get you get paid to train people to use firearms correctly. That you could take someone like me, a complete novice, and you can get me ready if I, of course, am a good student, I have to participate too. <laughs> but in 16 hours, you can get me ready to where you'll feel comfortable that I could walk out of there and if the state of Illinois grants all my permits and everything, I could successfully carry a weapon and you'd feel comfortable about that. We have to or we won't sign off on it. That's the other thing. Can you flunk? Oh, yes. Bet. Okay. Yes. The, the last portion is, and this is why you have to have the FOID card, you have to bring your own firearm and you have to shoot and qualify. And they, we, the state has set up a standard. You, have, you get to fire 30 rounds, and you fire from 5, 7, and 10 yards. You have to hit 21 out of 30 in the, in the target. So, and people tend to get a little nervous when they know there's a test. So it, it puts a little bit of stress on them. So if you can't do that, and that's the, a minimum standard, if you can't do that, you fail. Because you're going to be under a lot more stress yes, if you're right. getting into your car and somebody comes up behind you. Yes. <laughs> you're, you're going to have a little bit of stress there, too. My guests today are Jim Bland and Mike Shuttler. And let's talk about your business. I'll give you a free plug. Uh, the name of your company and how people can get in touch with you if they want to take firearms training. Uh, our company name is WISE, W-I-S-E, which stands for Western Illinois Shooting Excellence. Um, our website is wisefirearmstraining.com. You can reach us at 217-242-2727, or you can do it online. If you go online, you'll see some pictures of our shooting area. Uh, you can see some pictures of the class, and it's got a bio of not just Jim and myself, but uh, the other two partners who are just as important we are, is Jason and Kelly Klenner, uh, husband and wife. Jason's been teaching for four or five years. Uh, Kelly, all, all four of us, I want to tell you right now that all four of us are Illinois certified instructors. Um, all of us except Jim are NRA certified instructors. And uh, Jim headed that way, but that's, it's just, we're doing something else with I'll take, I'll take your police yeah. officer training. Yeah. It's, I, odd, I would, yeah. it's pretty good I, I enough agree. for me. So uh, it'll, it's got a little bio of all four of us. Uh, it tells a lot of things. It tells our dates we have classes. and uh, Or they can, they can send an email to us, and, and our emails are on the website also. Okay. So the bottom line is there are multiple companies. You're not the only game in town. That's there correct. are multiple places to do this. Some are having um, courses just for ladies. If the you know if the ladies want to come in and, and get certified for this, so this is an important thing. And you know, on the Mary Griffith Show, I'm not just talking to the gun aficionados. I'm talking to other people who have no desire whatsoever to be part of this game, but they are concerned about what kind of training, because now. Who knows who's got a gun on them? You know, you're walking wherever, and you better hope the person who decides to do this is a responsible gun owner and a responsible concealed carry owner, and you're doing your best to make sure that's true. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought that up because shortly uh, there's going to be a lot of people out walking around with those. Illinois did something that uh, a lot of states haven't. They say that your firearm has to be concealed or mostly concealed. And I bring that up so that, hypothetically, if I'm sitting at, uh, standing at the restaurant, uh, getting ready to pay for my meal, and I reach back to get my wallet, and when I do so, you see the top part of my firearm. Don't get nervous and start screaming, yelling, gun, and calling the police department, because that's something that's probably going to happen more than you than you realize. Um, it may be happening now more than we realize, but it's just not looking I agree. Cool. I agree. Um, well, I've never understood it. Well, we'll get into this a little bit later, but 
See, you know, I guess I'm just a, you know, Hoss Cartwright and little Joe Cartwright. To me, again, I have no desire necessarily to do this. But if I was going to do it, I'd like to have a little fancy thing with a tie around my leg, and I just wear it out there where everybody could see. Now you're a former police officer. Yes, I know, but why not? I mean, what's the big deal about concealing it? Why not just because go back to everybody just walks around with one, and we all know we've got one. And if you don't have one, then I know you don't have one either, I guess. But because open carry is actually worse than concealed carry, and the reason for that is is that. You go into a store and you're open carrying. You're standing there at the counter and you're doing this. The bad guy comes in and he couldn't he couldn't get that license. He has no gun. He knows you have a gun. He comes up behind and he disarms you. Weapon retention is a big, big deal. Years and years ago, most policemen were killed with their own guns because they would get the gun wrestled away. The police departments over the over time have tried to cut down on that by making the holsters a little safer. Uh, you know, they have two and three level of web uh, holster retention, which means level two would mean it takes two things to get the gun out of the holster. Concealing it, people never know who has a gun. And you don't always want a gun at a scene, and you don't want, pe you don't want to make it aware. You have little teeny people that are have, a, have a gun. For them, it would be harder for them to hold on and retain it against a big person. So they want you want them to keep it concealed so that now they're equal to the big bad person. The deterrence factor really relies on we don't really know who's got That's the whole right. idea. Okay. And, and you know, Mary... Uh, I, I better make a statement then. I, I have said I don't have a FOID card and I'm not going for concealed carry, but I've <laughs> decided I'm publicly announcing now that I'm going to be fully armed uh, to whatever degree I can, so please don't come after me. No. You know, before before <laughs> Illinois, I, just, I, had, I, mean, I realized how really dumb I am just a moment ago. <laughs> before before Illinois had concealed carry, Illinois used to post on their their site that uh, for women, you know, you just need to carry a finger and they'll file uh, in your purse. That that's your deterrent, you know. But uh, anyway, I won't get into that. Uh, one thing that uh, what we're talking about and what what Jim just mentioned is, you know, ladies are more probably more than not going to carry it in their purse because sometimes they wear clothes that doesn't allow them to conceal it. And well, good that, luck digging it out of there. Well, that's true, <laughs> but they also picture yourself uh, in a restaurant and, and you're going to go up to, to the, uh, the buffet to get something. You're going to have to you're going to leave that gun hanging on the in the purse on the chair or you're going to carry it with you. You know, that's something that you always got to be aware of. Same way with the guy. If he carries it in his uh, sport coat and he takes a sport coat off and he goes and does something he's left that open for somebody else to get so that's a lot of things that you just got to consider all the time when you come to attack me i'm gonna say just a minute here could you hold this for a minute here's my wallet here's my comb here's my cell phone i'll dig down and get that gun down on the bottom of that eventually you probably tell him to keep it a little bit more handy than that right yes i, I yeah. strongly <laughs> advise not to carry, not it, in to carry the, it in the, in the bottom of your purse not to, to carry it in the purse at all either jim doesn't believe you should carry it in the purse at all but they do they do make purses with a separate area for the, for the fire. I'm going to get a big beehive hairdo and just put it in there. there. That's what that, that, nobody will ever get. You know what? That might work. That might work. 945 our time. F&T Livestock brings you this report from the Ursa Farmers Cooperative.